Welcome to the next wave of digital video. I'm your host, Tony Reale, and today I want to talk about virtual production. Now, if you've been watching our YouTube videos for the past several weeks, you've noticed that we've been on pretty much a big virtual production kick. But I wanted to step back from those videos and kind of do a really a basic overview of what is virtual production. I believe virtual production is a huge, going to be a huge part of the future of filmmaking. It's not going to replace traditional production, but it's a great tool to add into it, just like green screen was a great tool over the past several years. And I'll even say like, you know, on our channel, we liked being a part of uh, emerging technologies. You know, one of the first things that got a, a lot of traction on our YouTube channel was the advent of, of depth of field adapters. And we started doing a lot of videos for those. And we were one of the first channels that was doing that. Later on, it became DSLR video. And, and we had a whole series called HDSLR 101 that talked about uh, what is it like to shoot video on a DSLR? And uh, since then, we started getting into virtual reality video, uh, motion control, lots of different technologies. But for me, I'm, I'm just so excited about the future of virtual production because I feel uh, if done correctly, it can be a great tool, even for indie filmmakers. Um, the truth is, if you, if you are watching modern, a lot of modern shows and movies like The Mandalorian, like Star Trek, like Batman, Tons of shows are starting to use virtual production in their workflow. So the question is, what is it? Well, there's really three different categories that you can uh, put virtual production in. Uh, first of which would be just completely all digital. So uh, you're using the Unreal Engine is typically what a lot of people are using for virtual production. Um, for some companies, they have their own custom software, but for the, the average person, Unreal Engine is the main tool that you would use for that. And to do it all digitally would mean just simply you're rendering everything in the engine. For example, you might use uh, a camera or a fake camera that you track to move around and shoot as if you were holding a real camera. You can even put it on a dolly or a jib and get the same motion that you would get physically. The advantage to this is for, for the lay person that doesn't necessarily know how to do all the intricate Bezier curves and, and all that stuff in, in the software, you can react to a, uh, a, you know, a digital environment the same way that you would use a traditional video camera. The second option would be a mixture of uh, in-camera capture with the digital. And the two ways to accomplish this are both with green screen or with something like an LED wall or projector or other screen. So with a green screen, you are using a, you know, a green screen that we've all used before, but instead of just relying on, say, the camera tracking that you would use for tracking markers on the green screen and trying to, to capture the camera movement through computer uh, uh, interpretation of those tracking markers, you're actually using on-camera tracking, using something like a Vive Tracker or Moses system or, or any other types of camera tracking. And with that, you are able to move the camera around and oftentimes uh, people can use live keying, which is the process of taking a key, running it through software and being able to see the key right in a monitor without having to wait and go back to the, your, your After Effects or whatever compositor later on. and and remove that key and then put the, the, the background in there. Live keying allows you to really see exactly what you're capturing as you go. So the advantage to that, of course, is you can move the camera around and not rely on tracking markers, not rely on the inconsistency of tracking markers and really get dynamic movement that would be very, very hard to do uh, outside of just you know a locked off camera move or a very simple camera move. Um, the disadvantage to uh, the green screen effect is still all the limitations that you get with green screen. So green screen uh, struggles when you have reflective surfaces, when you have shallow depth of field, when you have foreground elements, um, you know, transparencies, all those types of things. Those are the limitations of green screen. You're still gonna get that in a virtual production green screen environment. The main advantage is you get to see real time uh, rendering of the effects that are happening in camera through a live key and you can move the camera much more freely than you would in a traditional green screen world. One of probably one of the best examples that I can show you of this is uh, Film Riot did a, a virtual production where they had the camera moving down and around and up and tilted up, and they plastered the ground wall and ceiling with with a, a green screen um, backdrop, and they were able to do some amazing camera moves just through that. So that's a great video to watch if you are more interested in green screen virtual production. For me personally, the the virtual production that excites me the absolute most is in-camera VFX through some sort of a background screen. So uh, an LED wall, a projector, maybe a TV, something of that nature. 
again, if you watch the behind the scenes of The Mandalorian or a lot of modern shows, you will start to see that this is becoming a very popular thing. The, they're calling it their LED volume. Um, some, comp, some places call it the, the AR wall, but the idea that a giant screen is wrapping around the talent and allowing you to capture in-camera visual effects. So why is this suddenly a thing that we can do today and, and not able to have done in previous history? So the truth is we have seen in-camera visual effects in the past through rear projection, all the way dating back to movies like Dr. No, where you had a driving scene and you got James Bond in a car and, and the background behind him um, is showing the road or whatever. The challenge with that though, is you had to kind of use it fairly sparingly because otherwise you would run into a problem where if you move the camera at all, you would lose the, the depth of the scene because you would, it would give away the fact that it was just a screen behind the talent. Well, the advent of gaming technology, computer hardware, and LED wall technology have allowed us to now get to a point where we can do real-time visual effects. You know, if you ever think about uh, most 3D uh, visual effects have to be sent out to a render farm, they render out for a while, then you slap it onto the green screen. Well, now we have high enough end hardware, if you haven't slap enough ha computer hardware at it, with the current generation of, of Unreal Engine, you can get real-time VFX without it looking really low resolution. Real-time in-camera visual effects allows us to be able to capture things that have been almost impossible before. Being able to shoot with shallow depth of field, with reflective surfaces, with transparencies, with foreground elements, things that were almost impossible to do previously, we can now do right in camera. And there are several advantages to that. Obviously, you're eliminating some of the limitations of, of green screen. But what you're also doing is you're allowing the, the post-production workflow to be freed up and you're able to see in camera exactly what it's supposed to look like. Whether you're using a, you know, a large LED volume that can also light the talent and minimize the uh, requiring of additional lighting gear to be in there. Or in our case where we can again see it in camera and we can then make sure that we're, our lighting is matching exactly the backdrop that's behind them. You're not imagining what it might look like on a green screen, getting to post and going, oh man, we should have brought an extra light over there. Or I forgot that that light was a motivation. We could have brought that in. So that helps a ton. But even beyond that, the idea that uh, when you're shooting uh, a green screen, a lot of times if you watch behind the scenes of movies, they'll talk about how um, they measure the amount of VFX shots are in a film. Like this movie might have 360 VFX shots and this movie might have 580 VFX shots. They measure the number of shots because each one of those shots has to be budgeted for and allocated time for. But when you're doing real-time VFX and a director says, hey, let's just get this angle over here. Let's move that around. It suddenly reduces the, uh, the budget to nil because you can just keep getting additional shots without having to add to the number of VFX shots that have to happen in post. So it's a huge time saver. It's a huge budget saver once you're at that point. But the challenge, of course, is how much does it cost to get to step into virtual production? And if you're looking at the LED wall volumes, those are incredibly, incredibly expensive. Uh, it, it's uh, the, the, the Mandalorian's set and all the technology that went into it cost several hundred million dollars. If you step down to like smaller production companies that are, you know, that still have uh, LED walls that are instead of being, you know, several hundred feet in diameter, maybe something that's more along the lines of 30, 40, 50 feet in diameter. Those are still very, very expensive. You're typically looking at uh, upwards of at least a million dollars on up for those. Well, why are we even talking about this then? Well, there are more cost effective routes that you can go. If you want to just get into digital only, no camera, in camera VFX, just the in engine VFX, uh, Unreal Engine is actually completely free to download. Go to the Epic Game Store, Click on uh, the engine and you can download whatever version of it that you want. We work with 4.27 because right now that's got the best plugin tools for doing in-camera VFX. But uh, Unreal 5 has a lot of new features that's really amazing. So if you're wanting to learn and just be completely all digital, uh, definitely check it out. And there's lots of great tutorials on how to get up and running. And again, completely free. The next step up, of course, would be uh, green screen. and. Uh, being able to do a green screen setup is not terribly expensive. Making sure that you have an even key, which means evenly lighting the green is going to be your most important step. Uh, but testing out in-camera VFX uh, where you can then pipe uh, the video feed into the camera does require a video capture card. Um, again, there's a lot of great tutorials online on how to do that. 
But for us, the thing that excites us the most about virtual production is the ability to do in-camera visual effects. And for that, it does require some sort of a screen, whether it's a large LED wall or something smaller like a projector-based system. Um, you can go all the way down to even just a large TV. I've seen some great content from YouTubers like Leo Turney that uh, used an 86 inch TV and put himself directly in front of it and shot uh, a lot of virtual production content that looks really, really good. I'll link to his channel down below, but you can see what he's been able to accomplish. Obviously there are limitations to it, but uh, even just getting an 86 inch TV for a little over a thousand dollars, you can do a lot of cool stuff. Um, for us though, we wanted something a little bit larger, and so that's why we stepped up to the projector-based system. To use a projector for in-camera VFX does have uh, some limitations, and in order to work around those, you just gotta be aware of what it requires. So there's two ways to approach it, one of which is, of course, to use a rear projection uh, projector system. So you would have the screen, you would put the talent in front of the screen, and you would use a projector from behind the screen. Uh, this allows you for using any type of a projector because you don't have to worry about it being optimized for a short throw. But the limitation to that is how big of a uh, space that you need in order to get that projector far enough back. So for us, being able to shoot right against a wall, we decided to use an ultra short throw projector. These are typically designed for people with uh, home theaters in their living room that don't want to mount a projector to the ceiling and want something that's nice and compact that would sit perhaps like on top of their entertainment cabinet in their living room. And for us, this allows us to then put it just a few feet away from the wall and have talent able to be stand right in front of it if necessary. The biggest challenge with using a projector for any sort of a uh, uh, background to uh, a camera setup is simply controlling the lighting because uh, a projector and a projector screen is designed to reflect light off of it to your eyes and if you have other light in that room it's going to bounce off of that screen potentially and then bring up your black levels and wash out your image. So in order to avoid that, you need to control your lighting. If you watched some of our first video on how we built our virtual production AR wall, uh, you'll notice that we have, all of our lights have some sort of a grid on them to help control the spill. Uh, we also have flags set up and, and lots of control to keep the lighting on the talent and off of the screen. This is incredibly important. And the closer that you get your talent to the screen, the bigger the screen is in relation to the talent. So you have more movement, more parallax, more options that you can have but it also means that the lighting is a bit closer to the screen, so you even need more control over it. The alternative is to move the, the talent further away from the screen, which makes it easier to control spill, but then the screen becomes small in relation to the talent. So you get the idea that, that there's this push and pull, and that's why having a large LED volume is really nice. But if you don't have that budget, which, I don't, I don't have a couple million dollars to throw out an LED wall right now. Working with the projector is the next best option. And the truth is you can do it for, you know, the cost of maybe a camera and a lens. It's, it's not crazy expensive. And even using a projector based system is something that you could set up and tear down if it's, you know, if you have your basement or, or a smaller studio area to work with. So of course, once you have that screen behind your talent, the next step is to have in-camera real-time visual effect rendering because you can just put a, a background plate behind that talent and lock off the camera and it'll look pretty good. But if you move the camera at all, it'll give away the flatness of the screen behind the talent. So in order to avoid that, that's why we use Unreal Engine because it can real time render the background on the screen. When the camera moves, we can have that happen directly on the screen so it looks like the background is as far away as it should be in relation to the talent and the screen size. Of course, you need the camera to be able to be tracked so that the screen knows how to re-render that background. And we're using the HTC Vive as our tracking based system. There are other systems out there that are more expensive, but the Vive happens to be the most affordable approach that we've found for it. And it's fairly simple to set up and use. And if you already have an HTC Vive or a, a, a Valve Index, you already have a lot of the hardware already. All you would need to get is the Vive Tracker to add on to that system. So when you combine all that together, the hardware of the Vive Tracker, the software of Unreal Engine using plugins like NDisplay and LiveLink, you can, and a bunch of coding that uh, I'm just learning myself as we, we follow some online tutorials, you're able to tell the software where your screen is, how big your screen is, how high it is off of the ground, where your camera is in relation to that screen, the focal length of the camera, and then all of that comes together so that when you move the camera around, it real-time renders on the background. It works incredibly well and allows you to do the in-camera visual effects. And by doing in-camera visual effects, we can then now get around some of the limitations of green screen. We can do things like shallow depth of field. We can do uh, 
uh, transparencies and reflective services and things that would have been almost impossible to do, especially in a small budget, uh, small production company budget, we can do that in camera and, and be able to eliminate a lot of those problems. For us, some of the, one of the biggest challenges in doing interview-based uh, videos is finding an interesting and dynamic location to shoot against. And by having our virtual production environment, we can decide, hey, we wanna shoot this in an office or we wanna shoot this in uh, a warehouse or maybe a forest or whatever it might be. We can shoot it whatever location that seems relevant and have complete control over that. That's what we're working with. And uh, you're gonna see, like we're gonna have lots of videos on this process to show you how we have been learning the process. We're new to Unreal Engine. Although we've done a lot of 3D animation in the past, uh, Unreal is completely new to us. And so for us, we're, we're trying to uh, learn this process as we go and we wanna share that with you. So there's gonna be some polished videos that kind of summarize everything similar to this. And then there's gonna be some just straight up behind the scenes updates of, hey, we got to this step. We, we managed to get the camera tracking working. We managed to get uh, the, the uh, visual effects rendering in, um, in the, on the projector screen. So we wanna share those, those steps with you. So that's a complete summary of the basics of virtual production, how it fits in a Hollywood workflow and how it can fit in indie film production workflow as well. We hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to subscribe to our channel and follow us on this great journey because we've got a lot more content to come.